Warning, do not listen to this podcast if hearing about freedom and liberty is not legal for you in your community. And if so, you should immediately move to a hipper community. Welcome to the Freedom Fiends Podcast, where Michael W. Dean and Nima Vadadi cover the punk rockinist, hip hopinist current events, as well as timeless universal truths about life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, because there's no such thing as half free. The Freedom Fiends Podcast, available from freedomfiends.com. That's F R E E D O M F E E N S dot com. Freedom Fiends is proudly syndicated by Alterati.com and the Liberty Radio Network. Welcome to the Freedom Fiends Distance Learning Anarchy Series with Freedom Fiends Michael W. Dean. Broadcasting from my windowless bunker. And Nima Vidati. Go, go, Freedom Fiends! Freedom Fiends. What's up, Nima? Yo, what it do? I got a um a reverse 911 call today from the Natrona Department of Fear. I'll insert Re- it right here. All reverse right. Reverse 911. Is that a thing or are you making fun of it? That's what it's called. Oh, really? Ah, I've never that. heard that before. Reverse 911. You're going to play it? Yeah. And notice that the f- the beginning of it's cut off. That's how it was recorded. Mm-hmm. Um which was like I woke up and I didn't know whether to, uh, you know, like put on bulletproof armor, hide in the root cellar, put on my radiation mask or what. It was just something was happening. So yeah, it's it, just it's just vague. It's just be afraid. Well, it wasn't vague. It was just cut off. But um, uh, here it is. Uh. To the Casper area was received early this morning. All law enforcement agencies are actively working on this threat. As a precaution, all schools are on a level two lockdown. For further information, please contact law enforcement at 307. So, yeah. What would you think of that, Nima? Mm. I don't know, man. Um, so, I don't know. It still sounds like it was vague to me. Like, we don't know what the beginning said, but well, I doubt it was very DJ specific. said, I talked to DJ at work, and she said the beginning said there's been a, a threat of violence at the schools or something like that. You know, it was more wow. specific, but it was cut off. So, yeah. Yeah, it's still kind of vague. I bet they just have like a folder of a bunch of different ones that are pre-recorded. I mean, I doubt they have some guy doing voiceover work. Every let's morning, see, you know. gun, seagull attack, Russian, <laughs> Russians coming through the window, bow and arrow, bow massacre. and arrow massacre. Yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, some I think they were rolling around with the bear cat because like an hour ago, I was asleep. You know, it's like one p.m. now, like around noon. I was asleep and I heard like in my sleep, I woke up, I wasn't dreaming. I woke up and heard what sounded like a Russian tank rolling down my block and then just went, oh, it's the garbage truck. And you didn't was, go, oh, it's the Cubans? I no. I got to get the Wolverines together? Yeah, yeah. And uh, then I went back to sleep and then I heard something else in my sleep. I think it was that, you know, I told you we have those speakers around the city that go like, be afraid, be yeah. afraid. <laughs> Charlie, hang on. Charlie, you're not going out. There's threats out there. There's someone with a baseball bat somewhere in the county. <laughs> so um, read read the story on K2 News. Um, okay. Well, let's actually read the post, and then we'll explain the story. Um, so basically, Casper police uh, decided to investigate – a th- it says a, th- a series of threats, but really, it seems like it's just one threat, or at least that's all that. that well, it's we a threat, found. and then two ris- two people saying, "You go, girl." Basically, this right, is on four right. chan, four chan, which is yeah. a site I won't go near because uh, they they get a lot of takedowns for kitty porn. So I'm not even going to go to a site ever that I know has kitty porn on it because you know I don't want to get arrested for looking at something else on that site. So it's a site yeah. where people can post stuff anonymously. Four chan. F, number four, C H A N. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm on it now. I'm looking through the weapons oh, board to it. find this using a yeah, VPN. I'm, I don't care. I'm on it. Yeah, I, fuck the government. Um, and I don't. I I'm looking at the same time that he posted this. It, there's not really a search option. It's the, probably the been removed. Kinda, it's probably been removed yeah. because. If for nothing well, do, else, do, do they do that? I kind of feel like if you're fortune, that's your whole thing. Is 
post anonymously yeah. and we don't care if the cops call us. They can suck a dick. Right. Well, maybe that, it's that a thing of like, like thing. we don't want the web traffic this is bringing, you know. And you said it wasn't national news yet, but DJ said that she heard on the radio or like uh, she looked at the other, the, the, the Prairie Pravda and they said they were, police were getting calls from all over the country. <laughs> Yeah. Which is interesting. Well, the, the reporters all over the country are putting their stories together. But if you do a Google News search, which does you know worldwide for Casper, Wyoming, and only thing you get is the K two radio story and a Casper Journal story. Yeah, and it's interesting because the phone message said, "For more information, call police at." I cut the number off because I don't want people bugging them because of me and it coming back to me. But mm -hmm. uh, why would they put the number in there? It must be just from the folder of like you know seagull attack, bow and arrow attack. Uh, Gun threat. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, they have a PIO, and that's kind of his job, although he's What is the PIO? What is PIO for those that don't work in news? Public, public information officer. I forget the name of the PIO in Casper. Oh, I don't, I don't need to know his name. It's, An it's anonymous his... bureaucrat number four hundred and three, <laughs> kind of like kind of like the bodyguards in uh yeah in in Metapocalypse. Well, Metapocalypse. it's their it's their job to be the PR for the police department, and all information, for the most part, has to either come from them or they have to approve it. It's their um, job not to do not to give you any information that'll embarrass the police in any way, right. or expose them exactly. for any incompetence or violence. Exactly, exactly. And so, so usually it's it's a retired officer who's very friendly and is good at getting reporters to like him and threatens reporters with withholding information, too. They're like, well, if you burn us on this, then all you'll get from me in the future is name, badge, uh, badge number, and rank. Yeah. So they, they hold it the, over you. It's the Stasi for, uh, for the cops right. anywhere. Right. Um, so we've been beating around the bush. Let's get to the Let's point read here. It. This is the reason why uh, you got the reverse 911 and maybe heard a bear cat roaming around the streets of Casper, Wyoming. And it is insane. So, um, I mean, I, I can understand the insanity going on in the police's mind. But here is the insane post from 4chan. <clears throat> from Anonymous. It's from Anonymous. The ID is HX3 slash D3DU if the, anybody knows how to use 4chan and wants to I find think, the actual post. Yeah. I don't – I mean – it, that's what it's for. That's why there's an anonymous ID. Well, I think that it um, generates. Yeah, you could use it to find it, but not find the person. Right. Exactly. I think that 4chan actually uses VPNs like built into it mm -hmm. to where like it makes it so you can't. Every post, almost every post on it, from what I've heard, is anonymous, and right. uh, it was actually associated with the group anonymous, but not with like the real activist part of it, but more the like you know kiddies who want to like scare people part of it. Right. Right, right. But if, if somebody actually out there uses 4chan and is able to get us or anybody else some more information on this, that might be interesting. So the, again, the anonymous ID is HX3 slash D3 DU. The DU and, is lowercase, everything else is capital. And I should clarify, uh, the the real activists of anonymous would say that those kiddies who want to scare people aren't really anonymous, but it's a thing where anybody can claim that badge. So, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. All right. So here's the post. Finally, watch the news in about one to two hours. Casper, Wyoming. I'll be using a 357 Magnum revolver, a 22 Derringer. Let me inter interject. Knives. Let me interject. I don't like that he named two weapons that I. Well, I don't have any guns anymore. But you know that we had in the Guns and Weed movie, 22 Derringer. That's a pretty random thing to use. Not many people have one. Well, you'll see the point here in a minute. Um, yeah, yeah. I'll go ahead and do that just for. Clarity again. Uh, watch the news in about one to two hours, Casper, Wyoming. I'll be using a 357 Magnum revolver, a 22 Derringer, several kitchen knives, an aluminum baseball bat, a hammer, and a wooden stake made out of hickory. <laughs> and if the opportunity arises, I may even use my truck. Lifelong lover of firearms, including exotic class three full autos and things of that nature. I've got all kinds of ARs and guns that could mow down a small village before police arrive. But to use those would further the case that many are making now, that those types of weapons should be illegal and or taken from us. So I'm using my life to prove a point for you all, to show everyone that a very high score can be racked up using rather primitive weapons and even household objects. I'd like to see them ban all of the above. These fucking cunts want a war on guns, and I'm about to end that war today. I will be <laughs> victorious. I will make it clear that intricate planning and poor weapons will trump amateurs with AKs any day of the week. I'm tired of history being written incorrectly and then never being corrected. 
and those who know the truth being dismissed, having their characters assassinated in public or even killed. That kid in Connecticut used handguns. That's it, but everyone reported that he used shotguns and or AR. I won't even go into all the theories about the parents being actors and such. That's it. I will not be posting anymore. I cannot risk giving away my identity or location. Just be patient, and there will be no doubt that the person you see on the news was that guy on 4chan. I give my life for your freedom today. I love you, brothers. I will be leaving a letter that will be found, and I will blame my act on 9gag and Reddit. I ask that you all do nothing to contradict that. <laughs> a little wow. late for that, buddy. Um, and he has two responses from other 4chan users. Uh, one says, same thought has crossed my mind. Onward to onward, brother to glory. Another uh, response says, Godspeed, brother. These are all from around 8.30-ish a.m., so I don't know if there's been a lot more responses or if somehow it was taken down or what. Wow. Yeah. Really insane and really horrible, and I can't tell if it's a satire, if it's a joke, or if the dude's serious. or If, if it's just... written by the government to try to, like... Right. <laughs> yeah, that crossed my it, mind. Yeah, it's, it's kind of... It, it could be from anywhere. I mean, we don't really know. That's kind of the point of it being on 4chan anonymously. Um, if it is real, I mean, I guess if somebody's out there typing this on the internet and actually believes or is planning things like this for these reasons, I mean, how horrible is that? And how wrong is he to think... And to claim credit that he is giving his life for our freedom, um, again, yeah. think, think about how the ends can never or the means can never justify the ends. You're taking the freedom away of all those people that you want to kill. If this is if this is real, um, I mean, the ultimate freedom is the freedom to at least live. So you're denying that that most essential freedom of life to these people that you're killing. So you're no better than than any of the horrible people that you're fight that you think you're fighting against. Yeah. And uh, did he mention kids or did the police here just go to kids? He didn't mention uh, well, schools or police, anything. He did not mention schools. Well, other than he references the Sandy Hook shooting, which was a school. Yeah. So he's trying to say he wants to do something like that, but better. He doesn't mention himself specifically using schools because he doesn't mention any specific geographic location. Um, Except Casper, Wyoming, or that he's in Casper, Wyoming. Right, right, but nothing more narrow than that. Um, I I'm surprised that anyone in Casper, Wyoming, can even like use 4chan. <laughs> I really have little faith. There's there's young people in Casper, Wyoming, and they're just as uh, tech savvy as young people in anywhere else in the world. In my so, experience, I also think that the people to be really afraid of aren't the ones that would post about it. I really think that, uh, you know, well, I mean, gonna... there's, pre there's precedent. I mean, didn't, um, didn't the Gabrielle Giffords guy post some long rambling thing like this. And, yeah. um, and, and, uh, the guy who flew a plane into the IRS building in Austin, didn't he do, I don't know. I think where he, he posted, posted it he... to be found later online uh, okay. somehow, okay. but, um, you know, maybe he didn't have a web presence of people looking at him and he posted it and people just finally found it. Um, yeah, yeah. And I think that the guy that shot up Virginia Tech put something on the internet, something vague. Yeah. It doesn't surprise me that somebody in Casper, although who, who the hell knows because there's no way to prove that this was even written from somebody in Casper. That's an impossibility to prove, at least for us. I mean, maybe some CIA or white hat ha hacker could figure that out. Um. I was more surprised that the Casper police found it or somebody in Casper read it. Someone probably sent uh, it to them. I really doubt they, you know, it's it's kind of a, it's a really popular site, but it's kind of an obscure site, and I've heard it's yeah. really hard to use. Uh, yeah, which is probably why you couldn't find it, even if it's, you know, might still be up there. They blurred, they blurred a picture out here, too. What does that look like a picture of? To me, it looks like a bathtub with something in it. Hmm. To me, it looks like a car, but, you know, car window. Or maybe yeah. a garage with something in it. Yeah. yeah. Maybe we could find that picture somewhere else. Yeah. Um, hmm. I don't know, man. People are crazy. Yeah. Yeah, they are. Um, and, and what's, I guess, what's what would be an appropriate response to this? Because, you know, somebody threatening to massacre people in your town... 
what do you do as an individual? I mean, stay home that day and hold on to your guns or what? Hmm. What do you, what, say it again? What what do people do? What's the appropriate response here? I mean, if you were um, scroll, if you were trolling through 4chan this morning before this was on any news, before the police knew it and you saw it, what would be the appropriate response? Well, I think everything on the internet is BS, so I would just <laughs> click off of it probably. Right, right, right. And again, I go back to the like, anybody who's going to do anything seriously probably isn't going to post it because it would limit their ability to carry it out. And yeah. this, this person, uh, I, you know, I think they're evil. I don't know that they're crazy and there's a difference um, because he sounds really coherent in his writing. I mean, it's pretty rare for something like this to not have typos in it. And this doesn't, and mm -hmm. it's got, you know, fully formed sentences and tries to use logic. It's really, bad wrong logic but um right. you know it's not just right he makes an argument yeah i think it's the a wrong really argument flawed wrong argument and has but. has the wrong conclusion and of course the wrong call to action and is just horrible but um yeah i i, I don't know man i mean ne you never kill innocent people you never do that ever in the history it, 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 in in any kind of uh, sense of, of what we need to be doing. That should be the last thing that you would ever try. In fact, it shouldn't even be the last thing. It's not even on the list. Yeah, and even even from a like Revolutionary War II standpoint, it's completely wrong. Uh, right. You know. Right. I I mean the 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 Minutemen didn't go into Boston and just start <laughs> killing people randomly in the start public square. Start killing kids. Yeah. 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 So. So I, I guess this is, is, is just retarded and I understand, I totally understand people's frustration and I guess, you know, I'm looking on the 4chan weapons page and there's, I don't see anything else like this, but there is a lot of talk of, oh, well, the Congress, this congressman such and such from, from so and so is, is planning on doing, you know, says they're going to pass a comprehensive gun ban or gun bill today. So we oh, all they, need to be. They said that today? on one of these things see i slept fortune, in man so. i slept in and i get up and it's like god what have they done to us yeah, yeah. What have they done to although us? you know the other the rest of these posts are kind of cool there's people posting about all their mosin nagants and all their cool weapons so. um so i'm not blaming 4chan uh oh no no i mean that's like blaming the telephone system when someone makes a threat over the telephone and, yeah, and I or, feel the, the same. or the bartender because somebody died in a car accident. Well, some could even make an argument for that because, uh, you know, you the serve, bartender you should serve cut. somebody. Okay, uh, fine, I mean, fine. literally, the, the, the liquor if there was, store. If there was no law against uh, anything related with alcohol, and I were a bartender, I'd still cut someone off if they were absolutely hammered. You know? Yeah. Yeah, I would. I guess it's a bad a, a bad example. I guess no, I mean it's the, the telephone thing is more of an you know it's it's like right. blaming roads for car accidents. Although that could even uh, anyway, um, <sighs> people are stupid, man. The, uh, my big problem with this is he's kind of trying to make a Second Amendment argument. Ah, uh, right, right. And this but, has nothing uh, to do with the Second Amendment. The Second Amendment does not exist, so you can go into Boston and shoot people in the town square. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, self-defense people, not not concurrent aggression. I mean, the the idea is to not show the politicians that we can be as violent as them. It's to protect ourselves from them. Um, and that doesn't always mean or or doesn't ever have to mean violence, ideally. I mean, ideally, we can just avoid them and educate against them, and they just fall off like a vestigial organ, like they're not necessary anymore. Um, yeah. But but planning on killing people, I mean, just horrible, just horrible. And, I mean, even if this is a joke, I don't think it's a funny joke. Um, and, you know, I, I guess it could be police or, or some kind of government body trying to you know in, instill more fear in people i don't know i don't I think mean, it I, is it doesn't read why? like it i don't know man i think i know how those people think and this isn't it yeah um i you know i think what the government would do is is goad someone who's already on the edge to do things like this An agent provocateur yeah kind of thing yeah
And then they'll arrest him and uh, then they would arrest him and say, see, we protected you. And the result, if this is real, if this happened, the result of something like this wouldn't be his goal, which is, you know, suddenly the powers that be going, oh, someone killed a bunch of people with a hammer. We can't outlaw them. I guess we won't outlaw guns. It sounds like that's his logic. Yeah. The result of this would be a cop on every corner. At least in the at least in the town where it happened, which I don't want. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, I mean, it would also it it would help the left or the quote unquote gun controllers. It would give them fuel for the fire and saying that people who own fancy weapons and guns are all just crazies and will kill um, if they feel like it. So they people shouldn't have these guns because look at the kind of people who do. Um, I mean, this guy claims to be a gun enthusiast, has, you know, class three full autos. And so they might try to make some kind of connection there. Well, well, if you have class three full autos, if you have a bunch of ARs, then you're probably crazy like this Casper guy. Yeah. Yeah. And it would give fuel to the we need to mentally health test everyone and get everyone in the health system, mental health system under Obamacare. Uh. Yeah, yeah, which is something very scary. I mean, to me, that's one of the most scary things is a society where there's this um, top down power to say that you are to say that individuals are crazy. I mean, it's very Kafka esque to have some some kind of thing where they can just come in and say, oh, well, you believe this way. Well, you're insane. We're going to throw you involuntarily in a in an asylum. I mean, (laughs) think about how. How scary that is! Can you just think of of all the people saying, "Well, you're you're out of the norm, so we're going to re-educate you," or if we don't feel you're re-educatable, we're just going to lock you up and fill you full of meds and electroc- electrocute your brain or give you a lobotomy. I mean, all the horrific things that can come of this root theory that that the state has the power and the right to decide who's mentally healthy and who's not. Yeah, and I've never had reason to go to a shrink, but I've known several people who have, and they've described it to me in extreme detail, a few of them, because I was really curious. And the thing that I've heard over and over and over is that from the second the person sits down in the chair, the doctor has a, I am wise and all-knowing, and I need to know what's wrong with you, because there must be something wrong with you kind of attitude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, um. I've been to a shrink a few times. Luckily, it was always a psychologist and never a psychiatrist. So luckily, I never dealt with, you know, I was never seeking drugs. I don't ever want to be on any kind of, uh, you know, fix psych, it crazy kind of drugs. Med. I wonder if there's a psych med seeking behavior profile. That'd be weird. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I think drugs are fun, but those anti-psych drugs scare the shit out of me. I mean, really, they do. Um, I knew somebody who was depressed and was on Paxil for a while and it did not work out well and and they wanted to stop it like immediately like a few weeks after they started taking them but you can't because that that's even worse for you if you just cliff or just stop taking some of these psych meds uh you know it can be worse than before you were taking them well supposedly uh, a lot of mass shooters a lot of mass shooters have been on them Right, right. The the Connecticut shooter and the Colorado shooter, recent Colorado yeah. shooter, supposedly. Yeah, yeah. Um, I guess I guess the the state psychiatry, the state psychology thing, is also really scary for me because I feel like that is really my windowless bunker, so to speak. Is is my brain is mine, and that's <laughs> that's my last bastion of freedom. And if when when people start letting the state into their brains or saying, well, the state has a right to be in your brain. Uh, that's that's going way too far for me. That that's a little. That's way too close. That, that's more than close to home. That's in your home, you know. Yeah, I mean, it's when people say you can lock my body, but you can't take my mind and things like that. You know, basically, that means even if you put me in prison, I've still got the sanctity of my brain. Right. But they can invade the sanctity of your brain without even putting you in prison. I mean, there are millions of people walking around, going to work, and doing their jobs, and going to school who the sanctity of their brain has been invaded by the state and its medicine. Right, right. Your parents let them into your brain when they put you in government kindergarten 12 years ago or however many years ago you were in kindergarten. Yeah. I I woke up to an email from DJ today that said, Casper threatened. 
Some non-specific threats to Casper area caused a lockdown at local schools today. Good grief. Some online message board contained the threats which referenced violence from baseball bats and knives in addition to firearms. The world has gone crazy. I blame the government. Happy Monday, my love. Mew. <sighs> Mew. Yeah. Yeah. I love my wife. <clears throat> also, if if this is real, if this was a person who's really planning on this, um, don't you think it might be in his interest to misdirect authorities? Like, if he was really planning it for Glenrock or Douglas. <laughs> Riverton have, or... Riverton or some or town Beast near. Lick, Beast Lick, Wyoming. Right, right. You, you might misdirect and say Casper, and I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know, man. Um, I, I, I really hope that this is just some kind of joke. I mean, it's still a horrible joke, but it, it hurts my heart to think that somebody might actually feel this. You know, somebody who's not part of the state would come to this conclusion on their own and make a decision to do this kind of a thing. It's uh. There's a there's a bunch of things in it that make me think it's not someone from the state. I don't know the fact that he used exotic class three full autos. Uh, that term that's something that someone who owns them would use. Although you know there could be someone whose job is to read what those people mm-hmm. say and try mm-hmm. to imitate it. But I don't know, man. It's uh. Yeah, it's weird timing too, especially. Uh, so, what's the what's the gun control news today? Uh, I was trying to look that up. Um, let's see. It looks like Obama gave press conference, uh, basically saying, "Hey, don't worry," and blaming the gun lobby for ginning up fears that the FedGov will use the Newton shooting to take your guns away, and saying that it's all basically saying it's all a ploy to sell more guns. <laughs> uh, so he's trying to downplay the fears of this. Um, thing i saw let's see let's okay see i got there. one right here on abc obama mulls gun control steps uh and he says obama says responsible gun owners have nothing to worry about which probably means right. if you're willing to register everything you have mm. for now we'll let you keep it yeah his definition of responsible of course yeah 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 and of course i've received a list of sensible common sense tips Ah, that mm. ABC story was we playing some, audio. I we hate can get some, I can do that here. I can. Uh, I can play the audio. No, don't play the audio. It was an ad. I was yelling at. No, it. but I've like, got. No, the, I want to read. I've got the real audio. I got the okay. real audio. Okay. Mm. Is it playing? Can't hear it. Yeah, we're real uh, radio ready yeah. here, man. I I don't want to play it. Um, yeah, I don't like to hear Obama talk. It just really upsets me. Why? <laughs> Why? Because it's so hollow and people give it such reverence that it doesn't yeah. deserve. Yeah. 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 And it's weird timing too. You know, and something I want to talk about, I want to go look at the SPLC uh, Meet the Patriots site, the Southern Poverty Law Center. And it's really interesting to me, you know, this this is all written over the past few years. Um, and a lot of it is the Southern Poverty Law Center looking at patriots like Sheriff Richard Mack, you know, people that are in our movie, people that we follow. Uh, I don't follow all of them because some of them are racist and homophobic and horrible and uh, not not the kind of thing I dig, but I just sent you a link for... Uh, check out this Meet the Patriots site. I want to read some of this and um, talk about what uh okay read read arguing at gunpoint chris broughton 29 halfway down the page the black guy okay. it's pretty easy to find he's the only black guy uh, yep arguing at gunpoint uh chris broughton he's the guy who was um had a little 15 minutes of fame for uh open carrying the assault rifle on his back right at, an, at that at obama, obama rally obama rally yeah, yeah. and uh he that of course uh, got him on the splc's list here so I was uh, looking through this list the other day, and DJ says, you're just looking to see if you're on there. You were. Yeah, I was going to say that, too. I was, you know, when you were first brought them up, I was like, you're just mad that we're still not on there. <laughs> I know. Well, probably when we're on radio, we might get on there. I hope so, man. I hope so. Then we'll really know we've arrived. Oh, I want to say that last night, over the past three days, I've spent uh, about 12 hours total creating a database of all of the f- the radio stations that we're going to call when we get syndicated next month. Yeah. And first of all, the site that I looked it all up with locks you out after 25 searches. And I won't say that I would did, did this, but um, 
because God knows what could be illegal for whatever reason now. But something that people could do in a situation like that, or I won't even recommend it, but um, a way people might get around that um, if they were working for the government, say, although they would just pay the fee to do it, uh, uh, is using a VPN because you can do it from each different server 25 times. Right. That's one thing. Yeah. The other thing is, the other thing is, uh, you would be amazed how many radio station websites look like 1885 AOL homepages. <laughs> um, they're either like that or they're ultra modern and you can't find any information on it and they don't want you to contact them. That's all the clear channel ones. They're all really uh, modern and have no contact info. Yeah. Pretty, but useless. Yeah. Whereas the useful yeah. ones like really look like they were 1995 AOL homepages, like flashing tags and weird animations and garish colors and giant text. Right. Right. Uh, but back to the VPN thing. Uh, I know a guy who's pretty savvy with computer stuff and he uses, he like wrote some kind of program or protocol to where his computer will constantly change like the VPN it's using or the location. Um, because he uses it to buy computers on like computer sites that are auctioning like cheap, cheaper ones. It'll wait till the price drops uh. and it checks so often that the site will lock you out because it doesn't huh. want people doing that on purpose. Yeah. So he, he has an automatic program that will change the location and like check back every second. A class when three gets, full auto computer. Exactly. And when it gets to a certain price, it'll buy it and he'll, he'll beat everybody out. And then he can sell it at a higher price. You know, speaking uh, so of I class, really cool. class three full auto computers, um, I've heard a cogent argument against banning, you know, 30 round mags and things like that. That's from about 15 years ago. That basically was, um, some people are hackers who use computers for crime so to slow them down, we need to make everyone's computers really slow. <laughs> you know, that there should be a, right, a right. one, a one meg, you know, like a, a, a 250 meg memory limit on computers to slow down hackers. Right, right. Yeah, man. Uh, it's that, that leftist mentality of having us all be equally hobbled and equally poor, equally limited. Um, I, I guess that's really to me where the the libertarians differ from the leftists is we'd rather have everybody be equally great and have the equal opportunity to experience the amazingness. Um, we, you know, I, I don't want to pull people down, and because I know that there will always be people that can get around any kind of centrally planned regulation. So how come those people that are brave enough to, um, you know, sidestep? the politicians and the fed goons and the cops how come they get to have all the nice stuff no just get rid of all the regulations and have anybody who um who wants or can try attempt to get all the good stuff attempt to get all the fancy weapons and all the fast internets we sell good stuff so let's go sell some stuff yeah a science fiction comic adventure from big head press quantum vibe it's year 25 23 there are colonies on venus mars and mercury Travel in bubbles, fly at hyperspeed With brain implants and artificial gravity A scientific genius and his clever assistant Set out on an adventure through the solar system On a secret mission to find the key To access new frontiers and save liberty Quantum vibe There's a robot girl and zany creatures Made with genetically engineered features And corporate villains crave the opportunity Clever assistant set out on an adventure through the solar system on a secret mission to find the key to access new frontiers and save liberty. QuantumVibe.com. Hi, I'm Michael Dean from the Freedom Fiends, and like you, I'm concerned with privacy on the internet. The electronic police state is strangling our previous protections, and the central scrutinizer is trying to squint into all areas of our lives. That's why smart people surf the net with a VPN or virtual private network. I use a VPN from Bola VPN. Bola VPN has your utmost security in mind and will allow you to surf, email, and do other computing tasks without leaving a trail of breadcrumbs across the internet. Unlike many other VPN providers, Bola VPN doesn't log traffic. With Bola VPN, you can change your apparent location or disappear completely. Bola VPN has been around since 2007, which is OG in the VPN world. Bola VPN is easy to install and configure. 
Best of all, it can be had for less than 25 cents a day, which is a small price to pay for this much security. And if you open a support ticket saying you heard about them through the Freedom Fiends, they'll add three extra days free. That's BolaVPN at B-O-L-E-H-V-P-N dot net. That was a really uh, Hannity-esque segue, huh? <laughs> no, it wasn't specific. He's always like, man, my hands are dry. It must be all that hard water here at this studio I'm visiting. At <laughs> home, I use this salt water, hot water... Hard water, soft water prevention system. <laughs> you know, Hannity is is basically saying that a bunch of states are going to secede, and we're going to talk about secession talk that's going around later. But when Hannity's saying including it, including the White House's response to the yeah, secession talk, yeah. which which addressed none of the concerns in any cogent way and just sounded really flowery, so leftists can put it up and be like, "See, we need to work together, people. We need to work together to kill people like the government does." So, uh, and then, you know, another thing people say about the, the resistance to Obama's glorious march through America is, uh, that it's all racism, but, uh, let's read this statement about this black guy, uh, Uh, on the Southern Poverty Law Center site. Go ahead. This is the SPLC's take on Chris Broughton, a 29 year old black man. Chris Broughton loves his guns and hates president Obama so much. In fact, that he believes the president belongs in hell. He's not too fond of George W. Bush either. Hmm, I like, like that. that kind of guy. Yeah, I know. Bro- That's okay. One thing I want to say: we're going to read a bunch of these. Everything they say about these people, except the ones that are racist or are homophobic, pretty much everything they say about these guys that they're like, "Look how crazy this person is." I'm like, "This right all on. sounds great." Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Broughton made headlines in August 2009 when he showed up outside an Obama rally in Phoenix with an AR-15 assault rifle slung over his shoulder and a pistol holstered on his waist, becoming a hero to many in the quote-unquote patriot movement in the process. He said he carries his guns habitually. Broughton apparently assumed that the Obama administration planned gun control measures, said he wanted to make a point about the right to own guns. Okay, right there. This comes up over and over and over and over in the SPLC. Look how crazy these people are um, sections, which is pretty uh-huh. much the whole site. Um, right. Is and the and he thinks Obama wants to take his guns. That comes up <laughs> over and over and over in yeah. here of pointing at how crazy these people are. And I want to put a little thumbtack here for a second and go back a couple of years and think about over the past four years, how many people you've heard say from the left. Obama hasn't touched guns. Yes. Obama's never said anything. Obama's about not guns. gonna touch your guns. You're crazy. Yeah. And what's and what's he doing now? What's he do two weeks into his, yeah. you know, he gets elected and two weeks later there's this weird strange shooting that who knows if it was a false flag or not, but uh, you know, it's either a false flag or a don't let a, a problem go to waste kind of thing, crisis mm-hmm. go to waste. Right. And Obama's going to take your guns. So Right. Because leftists, or I guess, I guess not just leftists, but statists in general, they're completely reactionary, right? They never, they don't understand principles. They don't, they don't say, well, oh, that's a horrible thing. Um, no, they, they think that the state can be involved in any aspect of society and any aspect of human life. And so they're reactionary. Whenever something happens, they immediately grab the state and say, go over there now, now, fix that, fix that, fix it, fix it, fix it. And it just doesn't work that way. You know, the only way you fix society is you stick to universal principles and you uh, have morals that are across the board. Um, but status don't get that at all. That's why they're like, oh, well, Obama doesn't want to touch guns. He'll never touch guns. And then as soon as something happens that makes them cringe, they're like, touch guns, touch guns, touch guns. And to the credit of the SPLC, if such a thing's possible, it's interesting to me that they said – about Chris Broughton, he hates Obama, and he's not too fond of George W. Bush either, because most of the people, most of the thumbnail bios that they have of people on here basically say, these people hate Obama. And, uh, you know, like with with Alex Jones, they don't say Alex Jones hated George W. Bush, which he did openly Mm -hmm. for eight years. Oh, yeah. Um, but, you know, they just point out that he hates Obama because he's a white guy. But they, I think they're trying to make this guy sound like an enigma. So they're like, they point out that he doesn't like George Bush either. Maybe. Well, I know the SPLC is, I mean, they, they like to divide and conquer. They want to separate people into groups. And they don't then, like George and, Bush, and, though. And vilify those groups. They hate yeah, George Bush. Yeah, they don't Bush. like George Bush. But maybe they're making the point that uh, if you don't like either president, then you're some kind of crazy anarchist. And well, yeah, also that is a separate group that we hate. And that's that's kind of a new concept to the general public right. that that they really have a hard time wrapping their head around. 
you know, someone who hates Obama and hated George Bush, like you and yeah, I. Yeah. Right. Right. Um, so read on. Yes. So um, Broughton apparently assuming that the Obama administration planned gun control measures <laughs> said he wanted to make a point about the right to own guns. Here's his quote. The overwhelming statement I was trying to make was whether you like it or not, my guns are not going away, said the Phoenix machinist. They're going to be here until you kill me and take them away. He claims that some news broadcasters edited video footage of the scene to hide his race. Uh, it's black. They did. And they I did. wrote a song about it. It's a right arm, right arm Wyoming song called Fake in the Race Card. It's, mm. it's weird to me, though, that they say, you know, that. It's, like, hard to, it's hard to hide, though. I mean, all the images I saw of him, you could clearly see he was black. I mean, they were taken from the back. But you could see his no, neck but they and, they and, did a close up of his gun and his right. belt and his tie and didn't show his mm. hands or his face. Mm. I see. Um, and you just sent me. Uh, is this a mainstream report of him? Oh, this is another guy. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I see. All right. Well, but are we, we done finish, with Broughton? No, no. Finish Broughton. I, I want to spend okay. some time on the SPLC site, but um, fiends are pigeoning me, so I'm responding. Ah, uh, I see. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, um. Yeah, presumably, presumably, he felt that was part of an effort to paint Obama's critics as racist. Broughton is a member of We the People, a patriot tax protest group that has played a central role in the resurgence of the militia movement. He also belongs to the Faithful Word Baptist Church in Tempe. That's the church where Pastor Stephen Anderson told the congregation in August 2009 he would pray that Obama dies and goes to hell. Yikes. Broughton said he believes there is a hell and that it was made for evil people. Uh, folks like Obama, both former Bush presidents, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi, and the leaders of the Southern Poverty Law Center. <laughs> uh, that's who the guy was saying um, is are evil and go and should go to hell. And you know, I'll uh, bet that I'll bet that Chris Broughton would think that the guy that post would agree with us that the guy who posted this thing on anonymous on 4chan is evil. I think he would. I can't yeah. put words in his mouth, but you know, I've heard interviews with him on uh, Freedom's Phoenix. He has some connection with. Uh, with Freedom's Phoenix, he's friends with. Um, well, he's in he's in Arizona, so I would imagine with he's Ernest, at, yeah. at the very least, a listener. I think if you're in Arizona, if you're in Phoenix and you're into liberty or guns, uh, you've probably either been on Freedom's Phoenix or at least Ernest knows who you are. Yeah, yeah. Plus, he understands that the government is the real killer, and I would assume, hopefully, that makes him not want to kill because he doesn't want to emulate the government. Uh, here's his, the quote that the SPLC ends with of Broughton. Barack Obama is responsible for more death than my guns ever will be, Broughton said. He could end so much suffering immediately and instead uses his power to force his agenda. I do hate him. I like this guy. I actually wrote him yeah. an email once. He never wrote me back or he wrote me back and said, thanks. I sent him the yeah. uh, Right Arm of Wyoming song. He probably hated it. He doesn't look like he'd like punk rock, but if someone wrote a song why, about why? me, because he's black, that's racist. He, I don't know. I like. Lula, I like your, his, your other black friend. You have another black friend who really likes punk rock, right? I, I have another black friend who uh, likes punk rock and is like, I don't know if whiter than me is the term, but when you hear him talk, uh, mm. he sounds more like what people think of as, you know. Gun owners I'll who live in the hills. Credit card. Gun. Oh, I don't mean the sound of his voice. I mean what comes out of his mouth. I mean he ah. talks more like a patriot constitutionalist than I ever did or could. Mm. You know. Yeah, yeah. Well, you were a punk rocker in D.C. Didn't you have a lot of black fans? And you hung out with the bad brains who were. Uh, I didn't hang. I, I didn't. I never hung out with the bad brains. Oh, you um, didn't. Oh. No. Well, you went to their shows at least, right? Uh, I only went. They were on tour like the whole time I was in D.C. They'd never played oh. the whole time I was in D.C. Um, or I just missed them somehow. I was working or something. Uh, I saw I'm them saying, in, when, when I was in Houston. Uh, I went to a few punk shows. Ah, what was it? What was that punk club there? I forget. But uh, I had a girl I was um, doing stuff with, and she was into that. And I had a mohawk, so I was like, "Well, I might as well go to punk shows." And you know, there, there, there were a the Continental of, Club. No, no, it starts with an F, like Fredericks or something like that. No, uh, I saw I saw the Bad Brains once with all original members in a reunion show in like ninety nine in San Francisco. They were unbelievably amazing, and uh, their singer was really creepy and weird. And he was on a Rasta tip of like you know he had several wives in different cities, and he thought he was a king, and he taught. He, he had a throne on stage and he was wearing like some big animal skin and like really mm. looked like some, 
you know, uh, Democratic Congo of some Republic, Democratic People's Republic country kind of leader, king, you know. And he had a weird vibe about him. He, I told you this once. He walked by me at that show. You know, he was walking around before before they between bands before they played and it was like um he walked by me he's wearing a track suit which is a big you know rasta thing he's wearing a track suit and he kind of walked by me and it was like he he met eyes with me and walked by me and it, it was like the world kind of went into slow motion and i got really creeped out it was like a bad dream from when i was a kid huh. or something he he had some huh. weird mojo voodoo thing about him okay okay but i like chris broughton's whole like He's a machinist. He's employed. He's gainfully employed. He looks clean cut. He wears a suit. You know, he, yeah. he doesn't, he does not look like a, you know, bean pie guy. He does not look like a nation of Islam guy, but he looks yeah. like he's a pretty bizarre looking patriot, uh, pinup boy, pinup boy. Yeah. 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 I like that though, man. I dig that. I, do too. I dig the suit. Uh, I dig his professionalism. I mean, those are, those are the kind of good spokesmen that I think the freedom movement needs and especially the gun movement because the gun movement more than, or I guess not movement, but you know, the gun, people, the gun mission, the gun mission, the, defen the defense advocates, the defense um, mission. They're so often portrayed as crazy rednecks who don't shave and have beer bellies with uh, natty light stains on them. What's a natty light? Beaters. Uh, natty lights, a, a ch the cheapest beer. It's like the Southern, Oh, it's kind of like paps, but worse. Ah, uh. um, so. You know, when we get on radio, we can't say things like that. We can't like denigrate brand names. We probably can't mention brand names. We probably, I think ah. you can't, I think on radio, you can't legally um, advocate drug use. You know, we could talk about the drug war and what's wrong with it, but you can't yeah. be like, yeah, dude, I just did a big bong hit and everyone else should too. You know, we gotta, I, why, I, I why think, am I what? I, I think it's more nuanced than that. I mean, I listen to the comedy station and in everybody's comedy routine, they always make fun of, Big corporation. And That's comedy. And That's Starbucks comedy. And, yeah, but we're we're part comedy too. You know. Yeah, but everything we, also, we say is a joke. We also have to look at like who our corporate masters will be, and it'll be different for every station. So. Yeah. 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 I'm I'm mm. gonna beat you into submission and make you fluffy and acceptable and uh, shiny and and clean you up and take your rough edges off. You're gonna hate it. I don't know, man. I say we do our thing until yeah. somebody tells us not to because. We didn't get popular by being pussies. I know, I was uh, kidding. People. Totally kidding, man. <laughs> totally kidding. Okay. Uh, we just have to not cuss, and I, I think we need to find an alternative word for uh, anarchy. <laughs> Although Free Talk Live say they're anarchists, more or less. I mean, yeah. I don't know yeah. if they use that word. They describe that what they believe, which is anarchist. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. When are we going to get on this SPLC a, a, list, man? I'm really upset. Aggression we're haters. We're aggression haters. Yeah. Anti-aggressionists. Yeah. You should read uh, yeah. Sheriff Richard Mack's description on here. Let me find it. There's a couple, Mack, women, Mack. couple women in this hit list. Uh, yeah. Mack. Yeah. Uh, okay, it's on page two. Go to page two, and it's down near the bottom. A sheriff of their own. Ah, oh, okay. So yeah, we're kind of on an Arizona tip here, aren't we? Yeah. Sheriff Mac, Sheriff Mac, Sheriff Mac. Here we go. It seems hardly a day goes by without another Mac attack <laughs> on the evils of the federal government. <laughs> Mac attack. <laughs> this one-time sheriff of a rural county in Arizona and present-day icon of the Patriot Movement has parlayed his anti-government ardor into a full-time job doing speaking gigs at county fairgrounds, high school auditoriums, and hotel banquet rooms. He even has a sponsor. Good for Richard him. Really good for him, yeah. And I saw him speak um, before we did. We interviewed him for the Guns and Weed movie, and that's yeah. how that's how I found him. Is I was at the uh, Wyoming Liberty Festival. Um, that was thing in Lander put on it was, by. Um, it ahead. was one of the many times that I um, harangued you into doing something that made us great. You were at yeah. that thing, and you called me up and said he was speaking there, and I was like, "We need him for our movie," and you're like. You, I think you said something like, oh, "I don't know if we can get him," or "I think he's gone," or "I don't." No, know I, I think I, I think I was like, "Do we really want a former cop on our movie?" Uh, man, he used to be a cop. Yeah, and, and I that knew was more. I saw that was before I saw him speak, though. Yeah, like, and I'd oh, seen. Good, good. I knew. I knew about him, and I was like, "No, go find him." And you, yeah. you went through. You jumped through some hoops to do it. You had to go get a camera from from someone in that town news agent. No, I, I, I had brought the camera ahead of time. Um, uh, didn't I? He's one of the reasons that our movie's popular. 
Yeah, he really you know, is. he gives he it some legitimacy. Although I noticed that on his website where he mentions all of his media appearances, he does not mention that movie. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but um, anyway, uh, Richard Mack is introduced <clears throat> often to standing ovations as Sheriff Mack. His website calls him that too, even though he hasn't been the top cop of Graham County since 1996, when its population was around 30,000. Well, what's wrong with that? I mean, they introduce former presidents as President Clinton. Yeah, you know, they do. They they introduced you know the former speaker of the house as speaker so and so. Why why can't a sheriff do that in in yeah. the statist world? What's wrong with that? Yeah, in the statist world. Um, yeah, and you know it's probably kind of like more of an affectionate thing. Like people from his town call him that because he was their sheriff. You know, like hey sheriff, what's up? Like even after right. you're not the sheriff, you know. Right. Uh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's kind of how I feel. Like maybe it's like his rap name. You know, it's a stage. Name. Ah, it is Mack. Sheriff Mac. That would be a great rap it name. Be, it should be Sheriff Mac Attack. Although the, he said to me when I sent him the rough cut of the movie, uh, he's like, "It's a good movie. I really like what it says, but I, I think that the rap music might turn off some potential converts." <laughs> yeah, converts that are old and we don't need anyway. Yeah, and I'm like, that's what you're for. You're that's why you're speaking at county fairs and VFW halls, man. We don't do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you and I spoke at a county fair or a VFW hall, we would get like tarred and feathered, man. You know, I don't think so. Um I mean, people loved me in Wyoming because all you have to do is bitch about the government it, because there are parts of the government they hate. So you just bitch about those parts uh, and hopefully they can get it. And then you can branch out into other things. Um, yeah. Who was it? Uh, Tom Woods. I was listening to Tom Woods talk and he was talking about this one speech he gave and it was to some you know, very conservative group in some southern place. It might have even been a VFW hall. I don't really recall, but it was something to that effect. And he says before his speech, he was like questioning himself like really should i get into the foreign policy stuff here i don't know and he says you know he led with his normal boilerplate stuff that conservatives love you know screw the federal government and them and the regulations and them trying to interfere in the economy and he said he just parlayed that into uh his talk on foreign policy and how it was all still taking money from everybody and and how it was all part of one piece and he says that they it really opened up their minds and they could see it from that point so i think if you lead with you know getting your foot in the door and getting these people to understand that hey you know we hate the government just as much as you do uh, but this this foreign policy stuff is a government program or or this specific thing that you think you like it's nothing but a big government program so i think there's opportunities there uh the um the threat has been the the Th- um, the threat in Casper has been downgraded at uh, one thirty. Is it threat level orange now? <laughs> is that a red? Did they so, use that? It said, according to an update from the Casper Police Department's public information public information line, the PIO mm-hmm. people, yeah. this morning's anonymous online threat has been lifted. The threat has been lifted. Hmm. Uh, Sergeant blah 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 of the Casper Police Department declined to comment on whether an author had been identified. No, it's 4chan. Or yeah. if the status of the police department's investigation into the threat. Wait, that's not a complete sentence. It, it is absolutely not. More, informa- in more information will be released at tomorrow's morning's press briefing, she said. Tomorrow which, morning. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that, yeah, that's when you know in a small town. Yeah, if it was is, a big town, they would have which, it like Which is going to be a bunch of people, you know, in cop uh, outfits in front of a bunch of microphones with hushed, oh, this is important, and they're going to say something that's not any news, you know? Yeah, and they're, they're going to say the investigation continues, or yeah. we believe this was not a credible threat. Or, or the FBI has been notified, or, you know, yeah. you, which you really, do you think the Casper police could find who posted something on 4chan? No, that's, no. they need Hell the feds no. for that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I think they have a problem logging on to Facebook, but that's just me. <laughs> That's just me making fun of small town police departments. I don't know that that's true. Yeah. They probably uh, have some really expensive DHS paid for software that searches Facebook looking for threats. Mm-hmm. And, you know, actually they probably leads have a, co- a Casper College intern to run it for them. Yeah. And probably leads to no arrests other than, than like somebody smoking a, a joint in a picture. Yeah. And they 
bust him for a bag. Wyoming traffic stop leads to capture of drug trafficking fugitive. Nearly, nearly $100,000 worth of marijuana was seized last weekend after a Wyoming highway patrol stop near Evanston. Uh, people status. should read uh, You and the Police by Boston Tea Party. The first thing he says is, have your car registered, legal, clean, all working, all lights working. Keep it in working order. Don't have a bunch of crap in the back seat or on the front dash. You know, yeah. have short, have short hair. Look like a square. Yeah, look like a square. Yeah. Oh, he exactly. basically says that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, use your whitest voice possible. Like talk like you're on TV. You, you, uh, that's what I do it. with any officials, and yeah. Well, oh, it, it helps, ahead. man. The white, the whiter you sound, the more you sound like this. Uh, the, the more that's likely not very white. Just wave you on. That's just kind of white. No, it, this is pretty white. Well, Here, okay, fine. You let me try. White accent. Nearly one hundred thousand dollars <laughs> worth of marijuana was seized last weekend. After, <laughs> okay, that sounds like joke white. Let me try to do it real. Yeah. Nearly one hundred. <laughs> Hi, I'm Chip Block from Casper News. Nearly $100,000 worth of marijuana was seized last weekend after a Wyoming Highway Patrol stop ugh, after a Wyoming Highway Patrol stop near Evanston. The driver was wanted for felony drug trafficking charges out of Florida. According okay. to media release Monday. All right. All right. Yeah, that was good. That was good. I don't know. I just know that Chip whenever Block. I like Chip Block. <laughs> Whenever I talk to cops, I just try to use my, you know, my mo most uh, white American voice possible, and it seems to help, especially when you're at like border checkpoints and things like that. You know, I've I've had a guy um, the first time I got pulled over in Washington State. I think the only time in Washington State, and I was in a, a news car, one of the news. It wasn't a Jeep; it was a Subaru. And at the end of the the contact or the stop, I guess they would have called it a contact. contact. He was like, um, he was like. He was like, wow, you sound so American. And I'm like, I am American. And he's like, oh, you didn't, I didn't know. I just saw that name. And where are you from? And I'm like, Salt Lake City. Because yeah, that's what I say to people. Like, where are you from? Salt it's Lake City. It's a good City. answer. It they doesn't, it doesn't say, have like, any Pakistan. negative weight like Austin or Wyoming. Right? <laughs> right. Although it probably makes them think, you don't look like a Mormon. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, um, do we? Can we move on? Uh, yeah, yeah. I guess we can. Why don't we go ahead and take uh, another little break? Or why don't we go ahead and sell some things? Sell some stuff. All right. Yeah. You gonna go pee pee, Katie? Mm, I'm gonna get a drink. A Frankie, Katie? Yes. All right. You've read books, attended lectures, and you know the Constitution well enough to know it's a well-crafted blueprint to create an ever-increasing federal empire. But there's still one thing missing. Buttons. <laughs> Freedom Fiends now has buttons. You'll get State Speech is Hate Speech, Anarchy Gumbo, Guns and Weed, and two designs for the Freedom Fiends. Wear them with pride. Use them to start conversations with statists. It's only $10 for five buttons, including shipping. Go to freedomfiends.com and click on the link at the top that says buttons. What does freedom mean? Tune in to LRN.FM to find out. LRN.FM is the Liberty Radio Network. A collection of live talk radio and podcasts, all coming from a principled pro-liberty perspective. LRN.FM show hosts aren't left, right, or conspiracy kooks. You can tune in 24-7 to LRN.FM via your phone, computer, satellite, and more. Listen free anytime at LRN.FM. That's LRN.FM. If you like tranny hookers and shooting crocodile, tune in to FreedomFiends.com. This is Michael Dean from the Freedom Fiends. I've been on the World Wide Web since its inception in 1994. I've tried dozens of web providers in that time. The only one that hasn't broken my heart is HostGator. HostGator has unlimited server space, unlimited throughput, and a guaranteed uptime of better than 99.9% .9 for only $150 a year. You can pay a little less elsewhere, but you'll pull out your hair dealing with anyone else. HostGator has great service and unlimited tech support only a phone call away 24-7-365. HostGator is where pros like the Fiends host because we know how to do it right. Go to FreedomFiends.com and click on the HostGator affiliate link on the right sidebar to sign up today. Uh, I had to feed the beasts, man. I had to go out and... Feed the beasts? Feed the beasts. Is that some kind of euphemism? It's uh, put peanuts out for the squirrels. And uh, seed for the birds. 
It's yes, seven degrees gross. here, and it was seven below last night. Mm, it's brisk, you, man. man. <sighs> How do the little furry critters stay alive? Like do I don't know. I'm worried somewhere. I'm worried about them. Yeah, I mean, you never see a squirrel sickle when you walk outside. <sighs> yeah, there's a colony of feral cats near Walmart. I always get sad. But I tried to get one and bring it home one day, but I'm glad we didn't. Feral cats are feral, man. They don't like people at all. Don't you have a feral cat? Yeah, but he hates us. Well, he doesn't hate us. But he's scared of us. Like, he I like he likes being inside and away from all the other beasts. And well, he's you, he's been do you living. He's, yeah, yeah. He's been living on our couch. We have a big patio. It's like living room sized patio, and uh, we've got a couch out there, and it's like the perfect habitat for a cat. Like there's. Uh, a fence and then there's a bunch of bushes like hedges that like block it off from everything else so he can hide under the hedges when he needs shade he can cuddle up on the couch we put a blanket out there for him so he gets in the blanket and cuddles up when it's cold um and there's a bunch of junk out there too that he can hide in and under and uh we've been feeding him and we opened the door today because he's been living there for about a week just spends pretty much 18 hours a day sleeping on our couch he'll go out and like do cat things for an hour or two and then just come back right come right back to our couch and i opened the door for him he's so interested in the cats like he'll come up and try to be friends with the cats but as soon as like a human makes eye contact with him or looks at him he'll like run back outside real quick because we leave the 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 patio door open um but he really wants to be friends with the cats he just doesn't know about people yet <laughs> i'm re i'm back to reading the comments on the 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 casper police investigate web web threats the top comment is successful troll is successful <laughs> and, then, that was and, then, and then another is okay first off it's 4chan a haven of empty statements by anonymous loudmouths secondly yeah. i direct people's attention to the bumper stickers sold at rocky mountain discount sports Welcome to Wyoming. Consider everyone armed. So no matter what the guy plan the guy has, someone is so likely to put him down before much happens. Ah, that's a real good point, too. Although not yeah, at schools, which is, you know, not at the one gun-free zone with a concentration of defenseless people. That's why they went to the schools. Well, I wouldn't be surprised if people at schools in Casper or other towns like Casper across the country carry anyway, despite the gun. Yeah. Towns. I mean, these, these, these are towns that aren't like the big urban centers like Chicago. They're not towns that have uh, metal detectors in the schools or, you know, backscatter radiation detectors in the schools or even pat downs. They might have one school resource officer for like the whole district or just for the high school. So I wonder if like teachers or employees there would probably have concealed carry. Per well, you don't even need a permit in, in Wyoming. So I wonder if any of them just carry despite the uh, policy. It's illegal to carry in a school. I know, here. but but what I'm saying is, how how do they? Are you sure they enforce that? Very I don't know, well? man. I mean, you got to think about who becomes teachers. Um, even in yeah. a in a right, even in a red state state like the reddest state state like Wyoming and. Casper is one of the reddest parts, you know, the most conservative right wing. Teachers Protestant. of what, though? I mean, think about football coaches or your history teacher that was also your football coach and dipped in school and spit into a Coke can on his desk. I and didn't was a have that teacher. And went hunting. Well, I did. A lot <laughs> you know, of people that go, a lot of people that go hunting don't own handguns and don't think people should carry handguns. A lot of people who own guns, the rifle is something to come out of the closet a few <laughs> come out of the closet a few weeks a year. I don't know. I kind of think that may be true to some extent, but I think it's tre trending in the direction I'm describing. I mean, that's the new gun culture, right? It's not new kids that just want to hunt. Uh, the young people and the the new generation of of yeah. gun owners. They understand that it's for self-defense and freedom purposes, not just for hunting. And I, I think that that's sort of spreading throughout gun culture. I bet there still are people like you're saying, but I would think they're in a smaller and smaller grouping as time moves forward. The only specific uh, knowledge I have of teachers in Casper is I met a lady at a gun show here when when I was doing the Republican Liberty Caucus thing and DJ and I rented a table at a gun show and we're trying to hand out information and nobody wanted it um <laughs> there was a lady probably about 60 years old who came up and talked to us who agreed with most of what we had to say and said that 
she had taken early retirement from the Casper, the Natrona County Public Schools as a teacher because it was getting so lefty and the whole school board and all of the teachers were so lefty. She couldn't stand it. They, like they wanted her mm. to teach, you know, counter, uh, basically wanted her to teach that the, the constitution is a relic that shouldn't be honored. Yikes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, well, my mom left teaching young children for a similar reason. I mean, I left news for a pretty similar reason. Yeah. And your mom carried a gun without permission while grading papers, you know, which, uh, good well, for her, but that's the exception. I think allegedly we don't want to incriminate her. <laughs> it's possible that she, well, she okay. said she did on on the cast, and uh, you know, could you get arrested for something you did twenty years ago? I don't that, know, man. That's could not you? a crime, probably. Mm, yeah. Anyway, let's move on. Let's call her and ask her. <laughs> no, let's not. <laughs> okay, let's uh, open Oregon men carry rifles to make a point. School closed down. Did you see that one? <sighs> yeah, silly. Um, although there there was a freedom fix we did a while ago. Did we do it? Or maybe I read it somewhere else of a, a young kid, like 18 year old kid who was open carrying a rifle through his town. Uh, that was in that, Idaho. And the kid Idaho? was like 16. Uh, yeah. And he, he was a real clean cut homeschooled tie wearing respectable young man. Um, maybe he was the, 18, but whatever oh, he was 18, because in Idaho, at 18, you can have a rifle and you have to be 21 nationwide to legally carry a, gun, a handgun. Right. So he, for self-defense, in his, in his, it was Idaho. And he, I, think uh, he, I think he did it to make a point, though. And, but, he and did he, it, but he did it for self-defense, too. He carried, ah, he, okay. he carried a 22 rifle on his back, loaded. Since the state wouldn't let him defend himself legally with a handgun. Right. And his right. parents were fine with it. But, right. It's Idaho, and the, and the state tried to knock him for it, and he, uh, the jury was like, "No, this this kid is well within his rights." Uh, but yeah, I guess that's Idaho. I guess Oregon is a whole different beast, huh? Um, so do we want to go ahead and yeah. talk more about this Blaze article? All yeah, right. and then I want to talk about Eric Holder and how square he is. Okay, yeah, we could do that. And then uh, since we're once we move on from Holder, let's talk Obama. about. Uh, and the White House giving a response right. to the secessionists, uh, right. which is really laughable. Really response. square. Yeah. Okay. So, um, two Oregon men. This is from January eleventh, two thousand thirteen. Two Oregon men carrying yesterday. A yesterday. Yeah. No. No. Today's the fourteenth, man. January. You, uh yeah. Okay. You've been you've been busy. You've been busy. I know. Days are blurring for you. They really are. I've been yeah. stealing time from the fiends for the fiends. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So this is uh, from The Blaze, but it's uh, referencing uh, K2, not K2 Wyoming, but K-A-T-U, which is an Oregon station. Um, two Oregon men carrying semi-automatic rifles on their backs caused alarm and even prompted a learning center to go into lockdown on Wednesday, but the men said they were just exercising their Second Amendment right to bear arms in public. Uh, Warren Druin and Stephen Boyce, both 22, see, young gun owners, were spotted walking around a Portland neighborhood around 2 p.m., their weapons in full view. K2 TV pointed or reported police were called, but because Oregon state law permits the open carrying of firearms, the men were not breaking any laws. Druin and Boyce said they were just trying to normalize the image of legally carrying weapons in public. I just want to educate people that it's okay however you want to carry or not at all, Boyce told K2. But parents and others in the neighborhood were giant pussies. No, it actually says- You, you got to look at the, the video of this at 135 in the video, and I will link this. There's some lady with two with a, two pots, like dinner pots, like clanging them together, confronting the guys, saying, leave our neighborhood, leave our neighborhood, banging two kitchen pots together. It's pretty funny. Wow. Yeah, I've always wondered that. Like, sometimes I feel like embarrassed, like if my gun, if somebody sees my gun, like when I bend over. But then I'm like, what are they going to do? Come and tell me unarmed, hey, you shouldn't have guns. Actually, in Texas, <laughs> I think that you can be arrested if your gun shows. Yeah. Even yeah. accidentally. You can. You can. But um, not in Casper. You, and you've open carried a rifle. You did it in the movie. We filmed you oh, doing yeah. it. Uh, I did. While I was, while I was pumping gas. <laughs> yeah. You didn't go stand in front of a. Uh, a bunch of apartments like these guys did for hours, but, uh, right. and someone, someone yelled something at you, said something. What'd they say? 
Did they? I, I don't remember anything negative. Somebody saying anything negative. Ooh, here's maybe, one. Maybe a, maybe a right on. House identified in New York Papers gun map burglarized. Remember that uh, we talked recently oh, about that newspaper hilarious. printing yeah. that. It's not hilarious. It's kind of effed up. But uh, yeah, did they take guns? Uh, the target was the homeowner's gun safe. Wow. Oh, oh, I see what you're saying. Oh, okay. I, I thought the burglars were burglarizing houses in the neighborhood that didn't have guns. No, they burglarized saying, one that did have guns. That makes uh, it I not bet it, funny. I, 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 yeah, I bet it was a lefty trying to say, well, see, we can. You know, people are going to burglarize the gun houses too. Guns don't protect you. That's a pretty stupid lefty. That's a suicidal lefty. You, you mean that's a lefty? Yeah. <laughs> you They're not all suicidal. Sir. They're more repeat. murderous than, le- than suicidal. Uh, yeah, lefties yeah. don't want to kill themselves. They want the government to kill you, which is why we called yesterday's episode. Does the government want to kill you? Which we basically answered yes. And we're continuing that today. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, they do. They want to kill you. They at the very least want to, or claim to have the right to kill you at any time at which they so decide. Uh, so they want at, at the very <sighs> least the un, adulterated power to kill anybody they want to kill. Oh, here's a good one. Obama phone lady goes to Texas. You know that Obama gonna uh-huh. buy me a phone. She's interviewed on Alex Jones. Nice, nice. No, it wasn't he's going to buy me a phone. It's keep Obama in president. He gave me a phone. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So um enough of this status crap in the papers. Although I will say this, I don't open carry anymore and um I can understand why these guys open carried their rifles legally to make a point. I don't think I'd do it right now. Although, you know, really we shouldn't be tailoring anything we're doing because of all this. But no, not at all. And I really love their statement that we want to normalize the behavior. That is perfect, right? That's what we need to be doing with everything freedom freedom oriented is normalizing it. So people don't look at us and and cock their heads and be like that's insane. The you know, more normal it is, the more people do these kinds of things, the quicker we can move to a free society. That lady out there banging those pots together, that there's something that's like so lefty about that, but it's beyond lefty. It's it's like it's hippie. There's something so hippie about that. Like I'm going to go bang pots at you and that's my protest, you know. Well, it, re- it reminds me of um <laughs> that's my self defense that- against you. Well, there's that old video of like Ron Paul on some kind of sensationalist daytime television show. Oh uh, yeah, you know where every like some kind of precursor. Morton to Jerry Downey Springer. Jr. Was, yeah, that was it. That was it. And Ron Paul's making an argument against the drug war. And there's like these young harpy Puritan bitches that think they're all cool, and apparently they have like some anti-drug brigade that hits the streets and like voluntarily. Oh, the, know, they, the angels, the, guard, the guardian angels. The they guardian wear those angels. Mao, Mao red hats. Yeah. Right, right. And those that was paramilitary. insane to me that, that there would be this group of people that are basically trying to act like the state. Like, What, what were they, they doing, though? Were they yelling every time they were, he talked? They were, yes, they were yelling at Ron Paul. They were just insanely – they were harpies, man. They were, they were harpies. Like, <laughs> they seemed like little babies crying. <laughs> and it was it – was, it was horrible, and I was like, "Because he was talking not about making how, yourselves look good." Because he was talking about how the state shouldn't kill people for smoking weed, and they were right. like, eh, "We don't want to hear you." La 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 la. Yeah, yeah, it was nuts. Yeah, and that then that yeah, I'm I'm watching this lady banging the pots like. Yeah, she just needs a good cock. Yeah, I think she just wanted to be on TV. I'd do her. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I'm kidding. And that she, I don't. She's I, being more aggressive. She's being way she really more violent is. than they are. I she mean, really she, is. she's that noise she's making is is ruining the interview. It's it's annoying everybody in the neighborhood. Yeah. I'm sure. I wonder what she would have done if those two had pulled out their gun ears and put them on. <laughs> That's a taste. If they would have, if they would have considered that, if she would have considered that a threat, like they're going to get ready to shoot. No, they're just right, putting right. on their gun ears. Yeah, yeah. She always carry your gun ears with you. Because <laughs> the world is a noisy place, and you know, Libpair would be a noisier place than the world we have now. I think it'd be less violent, but it'd be more noisy. Some places would be more noisy. Some places would be quieter. That's the beauty of it. You could have what you wanted, depending you know, on what you wanted to pay for. I've been watching CSI Miami, and I told you that, and you're like, "What? What was your response?" I was like, "That's gay." 
Yeah, but not really gay is. like two dudes doing it. Like yeah. Gay, like, well, the problem what, is, man. The, well, one thing is, I really like to consume media sequentially. I like to get something that I like and watch a hundred episodes of it in a row. And there are like I do too. But why would you, why would you like CSI Miami? Well, the problem with cop shows is that they're some of the better TV out there, despite being statist. And I can like kind of try to ignore the statism, which is really suspension hard. Suspension of statism. Yes, suspension of state belief. Yeah. But. There were two lines in two different episodes that really bothered me. One was they were going after a meth cook. Uh uh, And there was some line of like in in interrogation, they said to some guy like, uh, hey, he's like, hey, I'm only human. And they're like, but they got the information of where the meth cook was. And his name was Billy. And they're like, well, Billy's not human. Let's go find him. You know, because he cooks meth, he's not human. And there was another line where uh, some drug dealer shot some other drug dealer and there were two cops talking about it. And one of them said, uh, hey, you know, I, you don't need to investigate this very hard. I mean, you know, some some scumbag shoots some other scumbag. The world's a better place for it. Just be glad it wasn't a taxpayer. That mm-hmm. sentence right there just mm-hmm. defines the state to me. It just sure be does. glad it wasn't our one of our tax cattle. And the really ironic thing is, Drug dealers contribute to the economy in a positive way, and they pay taxes even if they don't pay taxes on their drug fund. Because they pay sales yeah, taxes. They, on buy, what they buy, yeah, they buy bling. They buy, uh, you know, rimmed yeah. rimmed wheels and flat screen TVs and ARs. Yeah, they sure do. Uh, also, it 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 sort of sums up the state too, because when that kind of stuff works in the state's favor, they will use it. So they'll say, yeah, don't investigate it very hard. It's just a gang member killing another gang member for drugs. It wasn't even but gang the, members. It was just. Dr- Peaceful drug dealers, actually. Ah, well, I guess not, not peaceful because <laughs> one killed the other, but, <laughs> but they weren't but, hurting other people. But those are, aren't, I mean, aren't those the vast majority of gun violence stats is things that are violence caused because of states yeah. uh, pushing uh, certain aspects of the economy into a black market? So, But they don't ever say that when they say America has 11,000 gun deaths a year. They don't say, well, the vast majority of those are because we have a war on drugs. It's because we have a black market well, on drugs and it's even, just people killing each other even, for, even for can, that. Even smart, conservative, Republican uh, gun owners address that by saying, you know, most of the gr- gun crime is is one – one gangbanger scumbag shooting another gangbang scumbag. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But Piers Morgan. Uh, Pierced or butthole. Pierced, Pierced butthole. butthole Morgan. Correctly address him. Pierced right. butthole Morgan. Right. And if you brought that up, he'd probably call you a racist. Yeah. Yeah. So let's listen to this um, recording of Eric Holder saying gun owners should cower in shame like smokers. Oh, yeah. yeah this, this is, is uh, it's an old thing that recently got resurfaced. It's from 1995. Let's uh let's listen to this here. Yeah. We're gonna have an ad? No. This is uh, Eric Holder going all the way back to nineteen ninety five. Informational campaign to really change the hearts and minds of people in Washington DC and in particular our young people. They are saturated uh, in the media and in entertainment or by the entertainment industry with violence. And I think too many of our um, young people, in particular our young men, are fascinated with violence and in particular fascinated with guns. And what we need to do is change the way in which people think about guns, especially young people, and make it something that's not cool, that it's not acceptable, it's not hip uh, to carry a gun anymore. Uh, Unless you're the government. Uh, in the way in which we've changed our attitudes about cigarettes, you know, when I was growing up, people smoked all the time. I mean, both my, my parents did. But over time, we changed the way in which people thought about smoking. And so now we have people who cower outside uh, of buildings and kind of smoke in private and don't want. So offensive. We've changed. OK, I'm, uh, I'll let it play. Hang on. No, admit it. Um, And that's what I think we need to do with guns. One thing that I think is clear with young people and with adults as well is that we just have to be repetitive about this. It's not enough to simply have a a catchy ad on a Monday and then only do it every Monday. We need to do this every day of the week and just really brainwash people into thinking about guns in a vastly different way. Wow. We need to brainwash people. We need to take tax money. We need to steal money and brainwash you into thinking that the Constitution of the United States, the Bill of Rights, should be shamed. That's right. basically what he's saying. 
Yeah, it is. And he was the and, U.S. attorney for District of Columbia at the time. Right. So, so when he says we, he, he does mean the state. Um, yeah. Oh. You know, here's the thing, though, is if he would have said, if he would have replaced blaming the inanimate object uh, and, and you know, not called for a centralization of gun power, because that, that nobody really wants gun control, like, like Molyneux says. They just want uh, guns to be concentrated in the state. They don't want guns to cease to exist. They still want the state to have guns. But if he would have said, we need to make using guns aggressively not cool. We need, we need to make aggression not cool. Uh, you know, he, that would have been a perfect statement, because that's true. We need, we need to keep aggression with guns from being cool, and that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to say when the state aggresses on people with guns, it's not cool, just as when an individual does it, it's not cool. But the that, guns, lady, that lady who's banging her pots and pans together because there's, because there's somebody in front of her house with a rifle, can you imagine if there was like a SWAT team member with a rifle in front of her apartment. And she went out there and banged pots <sighs> and pans at him. She doesn't oh, want yeah. guns to go away. That's, she wants that's a non, non-government guns to go away. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. yeah Although it's, even, she's an Oregon about that. She's an Oregon hippie. She, maybe she would do that to a SWAT team member. Probably not yeah. though, because but, but, even the people that used to be anti-government guns are all brainwashed now or mostly brainwashed now to where they're like, Oh, I feel safer because there's someone from the government with a gun outside my building. Yeah, yeah, likely. Um, I mean, we don't know her personally, but I, I would probably go with I her know her personally. I don't know that one personally, but I know that species. They're really good in bed, but they're <laughs> they're really good in bed, but they'll make you crazy. Uh, okay. I've slept a lot of them. But let's let's continue on this thought experiment. Yeah, what would have happened if there was a SWAT team out there? You know, I think the cops would have tried to remove her and would have possibly used force. I don't know if they would have pointed guns at her or tried to shoot her. They would have told her to go I, away. They, they and if she her. didn't, they would have proned her to they the ground and handcuffed and yeah. put put uh, plastic cuffs on her. Maybe even have tasered her. Yeah. And then and then searched her butt for weapons. Probably because <laughs> they can. They can rape you. They can put on their purple yeah. gloves and stick their hand down your pants. We saw recently in Austin, Texas, uh, you know, cops smelled pot in a car and pulled two ladies out of it. And lady cops stuck the hand down the front and back of the pants at a traffic stop. And there was no right. drugs. There was nothing. Right. Right. Not the lady cops. So you just know they're dykes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about That's that. Sexist. Yeah. So, yeah, Eric uh, Holder is incredibly square and he's evil. He's evil. He wants to. Uh, I mean. The balls of this guy saying we need to make guns and violence not cool. That guy's whole reason to get up in the morning is to commit violence with guns. Yeah, that, that's sure what is. he and the people in that administration do, and every administration. Yeah, but yeah. it's gotten that's the, that's, a lot. That's their job. That's their job, man. Yeah, you know, you yeah. and I get up in the morning. They want all the pie. They want all the cake. That's all they're saying is is let me do all the violence. It's <laughs> you and I get up in the morning to spread freedom. They get up yeah. in the morning to spread tyranny and kill people and yeah. get away with it and like rewrite the laws to where they can kill people without a trial and say, oh, well, that's constitutional because we've redefined it's, what the constitution yeah. it's, means. It's due process because we talked about it. It's due process yeah. because the president thought about it in his brain. The president had the due process of saying, yeah, let's do that. Yeah. It's yeah. So let's get back. Let's finish up here with the last 20 minutes or so of uh, – how Obama has decided to become king. I mean, really, every president's had some king powers, starting with uh, Obama's hero, Lincoln. You know, Obama is yeah. a Lincoln licker, and he's getting inaugurated on Lincoln's birthday. But, and uh, using, apparently, he wants to use Lincoln's Bible, which, from what I hear, Lincoln <laughs> was an atheist, and the some Supreme Court member, some some kind of other government official, had to actually buy a Bible specifically for Lincoln <laughs> to swear in on during Lincoln's inauguration. So, yeah. Lincoln's lie is now becoming Obama's lie. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, and, you know, people argue, like, Obama, is he a Muslim, or he's not a Christian? He says he's a Christian. All that's irrelevant. Obama worships the God of the state, and he is the head of the state. Yeah, that's his yeah. God. It's He's him. the God King, man. He's the Pharaoh, and he loves it. Yeah. He loves it, man. Which and is he, why the image I use. He masturbates at night looking at little kids spraying from Hellfire missile explosions. Dying. That's his porn. Dying. Yeah. yeah. Which, uh, I don't know that he actually does that. It's probably more intricate than that. You know, he probably. Uh, it, w it wouldn't surprise me. He, he probably did. looks at the live drone feeds of people being murdered and then well, se 72, hours, 72 hours later 
makes love makes <laughs> makes angry passionate love with his wife while thinking yeah. about it. Right. Either way, he's got the that libido, right? He's got the libido dominandi. Yeah. And so I'm sure he gets off in some way, shape, or form or puts it in the spank bank for later whenever he makes that call. Uh, just like those drone operators we talked about a few episodes ago, you know, I felt like I was hurling, th- I was God hurling thunderbolts from afar. Uh, well, they're just the people, they're just the monkeys who press the buttons. I mean, Obama's yeah. the real God. He's, you know, they're, they're the cloud. Obama's Zeus. Or whatever God of Thunder. Yeah, which is why uh, the image I used for yesterday's cast, does the government want to kill you? I used a picture of some Roman emperor giving the thumbs down symbol. Right, right. With a flick of his wrist. he can. Yep. Let's go sell some things and then come back and make fun of the president. Okay. Love the fiends and want to help out? We do take donations and we put them back into our Liberty Projects. You can make a donation by clicking on the spinning coin on any post. But what if you want to help but you ain't got no cash? Or you made a donation and you want to help more? Here's how you can help. Download and seed our torrents to help keep us drone-proof. There's a torrent club link at the top of freedomfiends.com. You can also blog the fiends and share episode links on Facebook, Twitter, and elsewhere. You can rate and review our movies on Amazon. Amazon and IMDb, you can rate and review the Freedom Fiends and Anarchy Gumbo and our songs on iTunes. That really helps a lot. You can buy our movies and share them with friends or give them out as gifts. And one of the best ways to spread liberty is to buy a bunch of Freedom Fiends buttons and give them out as gifts. Wholesale prices are available, and you can also comment on our site or better yet, comment about us on other sites. And please email the site link to all your friends. Thanks for helping spread the Fiends message worldwide to as many Liberty people as you can, especially to those who don't yet get it. You rock. Ugh, I'm so sick of looking at Steve's wedding pics, and I'm all out of passive-aggressive comments. What else am I supposed to do at work all day? Sick of stalking your ex on Facebook? Yeah! Are you all out of cute cats and autocorrect mishaps to lol at? Duh! Freedom Fiends to the rescue! The Fiends now have a blog. Read all about the latest tyranny today. Dream about lip pair. Laugh while Western civilization collapses. Just click on the cat icon to the right of freedomfiends.com. Freedom Fiends blog. Read it! So, uh, yeah, the president likes to kill people. He does, man. He loves it. And, and, uh, uh, and he will kill you if you don't want him to have the power to kill you, apparently. D- explain that. Uh, <laughs> well, this is secondhand. He's speaking through one of his sock puppets, the uh, director of the Office of Public Engagement, John what Carson. How, where uh, did they come up with this shit, man? Know, what man. is that? I don't even I know, know that existed. I guess that's like the police... You know, the federal, ver- the president's version of the police information brigade or whatever it's called. It is. It is. It is. But this is different. Usually it's the, the White House press office. This is- I'll bet that guy carries a gun, whoever he is, that bureaucrat. <laughs> probably not. He's probably no, surrounded John, by guys. John Carson's that do. too high level. Yeah, he's got he's got Secret Service or some yeah, other goons. These people don't him. need to carry the gun. They have people to carry the gun for them. Right. Exactly. Marines. Uh, Marines yeah. usually. Yeah. Um, So this is the petition response to, of course, the big hubbub, all those petitions that petitions the White House to secede from the union, which think about the word petition. You know, there's this there's this thing in this doors live record from 50,000 years ago where Jim Morrison is kind of ranting in his self-righteous poetry between songs over some instrumental jam. And he says, when I was a young man at seminary school, which he never went to seminary school, but. When I was a young man at seminary school, they told me you have to petition the Lord with prayer. Mm-hmm. You cannot petition the Lord with prayer. It's him just, you know, imitating a drunken prophet or, you know, drunken yeah. uh, televangelist or something. But yeah. think about petition the Lord with prayer, with prayer. Think about petition means to ask permission. It means right. to subjugate and kneel before something exactly. and beg it for permission. So right. read hat, on hat in hand begging for more porridge or whatever. And like, like Ben Stone says, he says, voting is a prayer. It's a, peti- it's petitioning your Lord of statism with prayer. Ooh. And, and so that's, that's kind of what this is. Um, and you know, I wanted to redefine yesterday. We talked about DJ getting her, her anarchy, whatever, you know, her, you don't vote anymore card. We, we decided later we're calling that her anarchy license. Right, right. <laughs> it's her great. permission slip to be an anarchist. Yeah, yeah. by not, so but it, but the the little twist is, it it becomes your permission slip 
to be an anarchist from the state by not responding to it. I like that. That really ah, makes it the anarchy license. Right, right. It's by like, ignoring. I didn't do nothing, and you just decided I'm an anarchist. Okay, yeah. go ahead. That's the opt-out. Yeah. Um, we hung it on the wall. So, but again, uh, it, it is a petition, and yeah, the, the problem with those petitions, but... Um, Where's the petition to opt out of the state? That's what I want. I want to get a card in the mail that says... Um, we noticed that you aren't interested in the state anymore. If you'd like to still be interested in the state and have it <laughs> controlling you, please sign and return this card. If you do nothing, you will no longer be you right. know, pr protected or subject subject to or protected by the state. I'd be like, excellent. Right, right. But we're talking wish, about I, why I that wish, can't happen. Be because petitioning is accepting their premise that they control you in the first place. Obama uh, is, a, is a codependent stalker lover. Who doesn't really? Exactly. Who just and, and, fucks and you when he wants? Right, and and the title of of the petition response explains that perfectly. The title of the petition response is "Our States Remain United." So it's it's bitch, like you ain't if, going nowhere. Exactly, you ain't leaving like, me, bitch. I'll give you a black eye and break your bones and then kill you. That's exactly what it is. It's and then like, throw, we're not, we're, throw not, we're not getting a divorce. No, you're not then, leaving me. And then throw you in pr throw house. you in prison and let other men rape you. Yep. And so uh, I'm going to read a little bit of this, and uh, it gets worse. Um, read all thank of it. You, thank you for using the White House's online petitions thank platform you. to Fuck participate that. in your government. Thank to you. To participate in your government. To participate yeah. in trying to leave your government. Right, right. In a nation of 300 million people, each with their own set of deeply held beliefs, democracy can be noisy <laughs> and controversial, and that's a good thing. Free and <laughs> open debate is what makes this country work. Until and we people... outlaw it next year. <laughs> yeah. and many people around the world risk their lives every day for the liberties we often take for I, granted. I think we risk our lives Pause. every day by doing the Freedom Fiends. No, people risk their lives every day to get out from under dictators that the U.S. government sponsors. People yeah. risk their lives every day yeah. to not be controlled by the state. To tweet right. in Iran. But yeah, but I will, I will proceed. But as much as we value a healthy debate... We don't let that debate tear us apart. There's no we here. That's what mm -hmm. I have to clarify. Is he saying yep. we? I. Yep, I saying won't we. let this tear you away yeah, from me. Yeah. From I'm my not part, suckling I'm not, breast. I'm not, I'm not part of your we. Yeah. Uh, our founding fathers established the Constitution of the United States, <gasps> qu quote, in order to form a more perfect union. Through the hard and frustrating but necessary work of self-government. Self-government? Ha! Huh. Uh, right. Right. <laughs> This no, is a petition to be self-governing, and it was yeah, rejected. And, and they're saying no, no. They enshrined in that – well, which is another good point because uh, that was one of Lincoln's hugest – contradictions is, is when he said that the civil war was fought you know we, we will not let self-government perish from this earth is what lincoln said uh, as uh, as he prevented southern states from self-governing yeah all right so they enshrined in that document the right to change our national government through the power of the ballot a right that generations of americans have fought to secure for all yeah right yeah you fought to secure that for people in egypt did you fight to secure that for people in Iran when you overthrew the the elected leader Mossadegh uh, in the CIA's first coup that they had a great time doing? Um, uh, but I digress. I'll go on. But they did not provide a right to walk away from it. They did not provide a right to walk away. They say this with a straight face, Michael. They did not provide a right to walk away from it. They're I saying know, you are so stuck square. here no matter what. You are stuck here. You do not have a right to walk away at all. How horrible is that? Completely horrible. That that Very. is slavery. That that statement, you do not have a right to walk away. Think about that. In in what situations do you not have a right to walk away? Think it's about when you're think about when if you're an enslaved. Think about if an abusive husband wrote this to his wife when she tried to leave. Yep. He'd get thrown in prison yep. for it. Yeah. yeah. And rightfully so. Yeah. With that one statement, they explain the true nature of the state. Uh out there in a form for all to see it, uh, for all the people that want to leave it to see it, they did not provide a right to walk away from it, is what the White House says about the state. All right, so I'll go on. <clears throat> As President Abraham Lincoln explained in his first inaugural address in 1861, in contemplation of universal law and the Constitution, the United States, or the union of these states, is perpetual. What Lincoln's saying there is, is 
the state will last forever. That that to me that statement, the union of these states is perpetual. Uh, that reminds me of in 1984 when they're when they're torturing Winston and they say and Winston's like, why why would you do this? And they say, well, we want to do this for power. If you want to envision envision the future of Inksosh, uh, imagine a boot stomping on a human face over forever and over again. For eternity. Yeah. You know, and I just want to interject here. I want to thank the state for waking me up because we wouldn't have podcatted today because I was going to sleep through it because I was up all night. But that Bearcat rolling down my street like a Russian tank woke me up. You know, I really think that they should change the name of, of the, the Natrona County Public Schools athletic team to the Casper Bearcats <laughs> since they love that thing so much. And they just it's itching to go out and ride around and say you're safe you're safe wait yeah you're safe you're safe you're safe you're safe okay <laughs> we want to get into your gun safe your gun safe, safe. Your, your gun, gun safe. safe nice nice All right. go on in the years that followed more than 600 a little more spirited Americans- man yell right. it say like the president would say it well this do is it in John Carson. do it in this, do, this do is- it in the white voice it's the president though it's him speaking through right, his right. In the years that followed, more than 600,000 Americans died in a long and bloody civil war that vindicated the principle that the Constitution establishes a permanent union between the states. Look what he did there. Hold on. We killed a bunch of people, and that's why you. God, the logic, man. The lack of logic. Look how they use the passive form of the sentence, though, there. Uh, The Americans died, right? They they were killed. The state killed killed them. Not the state killed them. They they say the Americans died as if as if it just happened like they, they fell over from a disease. But no, no, <laughs> they died on purpose because Lincoln sent Sherman down and and told him to just massacre these villages to just burn to. De- it's no, do people they, still the say the South will ride again, rise again down there, or is Texas just it wants to be its own country? Eh, so I've I've heard people say it. Is, is Texas the South or is Texas Texas? Which is it? It's both. In the Venn diagram, it's both. Okay. But it's kind of its own thing. It's, it's like... Yeah, we're the South, but we, th- we feel like we're better than the Because you were a country for about three weeks, weren't you? It was like a year or two, I think. Yeah. Or maybe 10 years. I don't know. I should go back and look, look at the history of that. But yeah, I'll yeah, look that the United up States, you, or, Republic of okay. Texas. The Republic yeah. of Texas. Yes. I used to have some fake Republic of Texas money. Um, mm. Got it at some kind of... Uh, oh, at the San Jacinto Monument, which is a monument where Santa Ana was defeated. Um, but I digress. I'll go on with, with the, the statists. <clears throat> it was from 18, 1836 to 1845. It was nine years. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. More like 10 years then. Okay. Um. And, and shortly after the Civil War ended, the Supreme Court confirmed that the Constitution and all its provisions looks to an indestructible union composed of indestructible states. Well, that's kind of contradictory, too. If the states are just as indestructible as the union, why do they have to be part of the union? You, I, pic- the union- I, picture, I picture this thing being released finally after all these people sign this petition and them reading this and then like polishing their ARs and saying, it's okay, <laughs> Betsy, it's okay, it's okay, Betsy. <laughs> Right, right. We won't let them destroy us. I mean, from what I've been reading, that's basically what's happening. And, yeah. you know, I will interject again that, like, I don't want any violence and I don't want to participate in it. And I just want to, like, be left alone on my own property. But there are about a million people out there who say that if they outlaw 30 round mags or require registration of full autos, they're going to start shooting. And the way they're saying it, they're not going to start shooting kids. They're going to go after, you know, the the people they feel are taking it away. Mm. I don't want to live um, in that world, man. I just where do I opt out and I just either. oh wait, we're talking well, about how you can't. You, you okay. can't because according to them, here's the next paragraph. Although the founders established a perpetual union, they also provided for a government that is, as President Lincoln would later describe it, of the people, by the people, and for the people. Hold on. The quote ends and then there's a line. All of the people. That's bitch, what the White House. You says. can't leave, bitch. All of the people. It's all of the government people. It's not all of the people. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I imagine that um, hyperbole and a half image of the, the cartoon lady with the broom. All and the slave, pe- all the all people. The people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, participation in and engagement okay. with. Do we need to read all of this? Uh, if let you me, want let to, me, we can. Okay, go no, ahead. It's, it, it ends soon. I can keep reading it. or no, we keep, can reading, keep reading it. Keep reading it. It's we'll got like two more paragraphs. Yeah. All right. Um, 
participation in and engagement with the government is the cornerstone of our democracy and because every american who wants to participate deserves a government that is accessible and responsive <laughs> we will respond and turn you down yes. for your constitutional right to right. go away the Obama administration has created a host of new tools and channels to connect concerned citizens with White uh, House. You can't leave, but we'll uh, we'll provide a website so we can gather your names right. and know who to right. drone. Yeah, they they also miss the article there. It's it's with White House, not with the White House. Uh. It's, uh, <laughs> it's like in uh, Arrested Development. Look at Banner, Michael. They missed Conjunction Junction when they were kids. <laughs> in fact. One of the most exciting aspects of the We the People platform Ugh. is a chance to engage directly with our most outspoken critics. That's really uh, Orwellian, calling this the We the People platform. Yeah, yeah. Freedom is slavery, right? It's double plus on good. Mm. So let's be clear. No one disputes that our country faces big challenges, and the recent election followed a vigorous debate about how they should be addressed. Vigorous debate? Really? Is that what you call it? What no I one's think addressing your two doesn't go too far enough. What, what no one's addressing is that if they outlaw guns, they are going to create an unprecedented level of gun violence. That's what yeah. people are saying. That's what yeah. the guys polishing their ARs and saying it's okay, Betsy. That's what those people are saying. Right. Yeah, and you're right. They always miss that, right? Whenever they they talk about government intervention, they miss the violence that it'll cause. And this happens in foreign policy, I think, more than anywhere else. Like the people saying, hey, we need to go into Syria. Or back in the day, the people saying, hey, we need to go into Iraq because people are dying there. And it's like Scott Horton says, what, do you think the violence will stop if America's there? You think that that's when the violence will get reduced is when we go invade them? No, no. You bro you put the state into a situation like that, and the violence increases tenfold or a millionfold. So it's always the wrong thing to do to impose state violence in anything. Ah, the squeaky Mike. The squeaky Michael gets the grease. Squeaky Michael gets. Yeah, it's going to be an episode title. And yeah. All right. So go um, on. Continue with their lies. Yes. Yes. As, as President Obama said the night he won re-election, we may have battled fiercely, but it's only because we love this country deeply Ew. and we care so strongly about its future. We love, I, I love you, I bitch. You, I'm not, yeah. not going to let you leave. I love you, right, bitch. Right. I just beat you because I love you so much, baby, and I don't want you to go. I just, that's why <laughs> I just get so upset. <sighs> Whether yeah. it's figuring out how to strengthen our economy, reduce our deficit in a responsible way, or protect our country, we will need to work together. And hear from one another Ugh. in order to find the best way to move forward. Hear from one another. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let me hear you scream is more yeah. like it. Which is, they always say we want, like when they say we want to have a, 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 a spirited national debate or, a, um, you know, we want to have a, a, a national public conversation about gun control. That means we're going to tell you we're going to control your guns and you're going to do it or we're going to kill it. That's their idea right. of a discussion. Right. Yeah, yeah. It's like when, when your wife says, we need to talk. No, she's saying, I need to talk. You need to yeah. listen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. When no. a wife says that, our wives don't a, say that. When a wife, not your wife. Or we'd wife, smack them. Because, <laughs> bitch, I love you. I am kidding. We don't act yeah. like that. We're yeah. nice. That's a joke. That's a joke. All right. Yeah. Um, We're acting like the state. That's all. Yeah. Whether it's figuring out how to strengthen our economy, reduce our deficit in a responsible way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because you've done that. Or we'll protect our country. We will need to work together and hear from one another in order to find the best way to move forward. I hope you'll take a few minutes to learn more about the president's ideas and share more of your own. Tell us what you think about this response and we the people. Stay connected. Stay connected. Stay, yes. Stay, 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 stay connected. Like, keep that, keep that telescreen on in your house so we can watch yeah, you. Exactly. That's what that means. Yeah. Stay connected to the White House by signing up for periodic email updates from President Obama and other senior administration. Stay officials. connected with the White House by telling it you want to secede so it can keep an eye on you. Yes. Oh, and uh, I guess I forgot to say this, but I must thank uh, Peace, Love, and Premix, who uh, posted this on our, um, what is it, our Submitting News Items page on the Freedom Fiends uh, website. Uh, if you'd like to submit any news items, you can do that. We do go through them occasionally and talk about them. Um, in fact, we're due for one of those soon, so uh, send them all in. There's a bunch of other good stuff here. Uh, we don't have time to get to that today, but we will. Um, 
So yeah, I didn't even know. It hasn't been big news that the White House came out with this. I did search it, and there are a few news uh, stations and news outlets that have picked this up. Um, but thank you so much for putting that on our submitting news items so we could get a look at that. Yes. Um, I mean, I was thinking we could have some commentary after this, but I think we already inserted all our commentary. I think we're done. Yeah, it was a running commentary. It was like, um, what is that? That something something 3000 the movie show where they play the bad movies and make fun of it while yeah, they're playing that's what we yeah. did mystery science Space. theater 3000 mystery science theater 3000 yeah yeah that's it. yeah Excellent. all right man Which, look for yeah, the fiends man. coming soon on real radio we keep saying that but it's gonna happen mm, definitely. yeah all right peace all right. folks peace man worms hello freedom fiends it's your boy me from the u.s get the u.s Screen. I owe me and that includes endorphins No one won't ask permission and I won't say please Freedom fans, the fact that I gotta make clear The Freedom Fiends podcast is covered by a Creative Commons Attribution Sharealike 3.0 license Do what you want with it and spread it around Tell two friends, make copies, email it to everyone you know Go on the site and comment This is a conversation Three times a week, Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati share their own unique take on the way the world works and how to find your place in it. Available from freedomfiends.com. That's F-R-E-E-D-O-M-F-E-E-N-S dot com. Freedom Fiends is proudly syndicated by Alterati.com and the Liberty Radio Network. Subscribe and tell two friends. And remember, the only power they have is the power you allow them. We're not saying the Freedom Fiends are the one true path to anarchist liberation, but it's a good one. If you want to put your voluntarist money where your mouth is, consider making a donation to the Freedom Fiends. Go to freedomfiends.com and click on the spinning coin on any post. Then make a one-time gift via PayPal or set up a monthly contribution of as little as $3. Giving to the Freedom Fiends helps advance education of horizontal liberation throughout the world. The Freedom Fiends. We work hard. So send us some money.